me say this to you. Let me say this to you. This Bible I hold in my hand was around a lot before, a long time before King James had it translated into English in 1611. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Way back yonder before he laid the foundation of the world. Praise God, the capital W-O-R-D spoke the world into existence. And the word, somebody said to me one time, said, showed his ignorance. John chapter 1. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The only thing you and I have in this world is that book. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Bible. Yes. It's a hymn book. Yes. And on H Y M N book, it's a H-I-M. All about him. Hallelujah. A.W. Tozer said, I think it was A.W. Tozer, maybe W.L. Criswell, whichever one of them. Said that if you miss, said you can find Jesus on every page of your Bible. If you miss it on one page, you'll find him twice on the next one. Wow. <laughs> hey Amen. It's all about him. Hallelujah. Amen. And I thank God for my Bible. Joshua chapter number three. And if you wouldn't be able to, if you'd like to stand with me while we reverence God's word, beginning in verse number one, and we'll read down to verse number six. Joshua chapter number three. I appreciate the good, the good sweet spirit that's in the house of God. Amen. I appreciate the uh, the uh, kindred spirit that your pastor and I have. We've not known each other long, but it feels like we've been friends for a long time. And uh, I hope I can say we'll be friends for a long time to come. Amen. And uh, my kind of folks. Amen. And y'all are. Amen. And it's good to be in God's home state too, of North Carolina. Preacher, I told him this morning, God's from North Carolina. Said he dwelleth in the sides of the north. I know it's not above the Mason Dixon line, and I don't think it's North Dakota. That leaves one other option. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, my wife pointed out to me that you all have the soul slurring hymn book. I'm sorry, I never get it right. And uh, so she said, that you're an idiot. You shouldn't have said that about that song book. Well, let me just say there's some good songs in that one too. Amen. Amen. Maybe that didn't offend you too bad. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So if you got mad at me this morning, you probably have been reading your Bible. <laughs> So don't ever get it to nobody. <laughs> Joshua chapter number 3. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter number 3 in verse number 1. Joshua rose early in the morning and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way heretofore. Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. As for in Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, bow with me. If you would, in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God. Thank you that we have a copy of the infallent in there and praise God, the whole word of God, and we thank you for it, and we give you glory for it, and now help us, I pray. I pray that you do the preaching. I pray you speak through your feeble preacher and say something to your people. God, you know the heart need of every man, woman, Lord, and girl that's in this church, and Lord, the preacher don't have a thing for them, but oh, it's the Holy Ghost of God would take and by the mighty word of God would go forth and help your people. We'll give you the glory and we'll thank you for it in Jesus. 
Jesus name Amen Amen God bless you may be seated Notice with me in Joshua chapter 3 They're about to cross over the Jordan They're about to go in And inherit the land That God had promised to Abraham To Isaac And to Jacob They're about to enter into the promised land Somebody say amen You remember the children of Israel were in slavery For 430 years Down in Egypt And they were in bondage to Pharaoh Let me just say to you that it was not God's will For them to be enslaved in Egypt And a bondage to Pharaoh You remember they crossed over the Red Sea By miraculous means And they wandered in the wilderness For 40 years yeah. Let me just go ahead and say to you that it was not God's will For them to wander Aimlessly in the wilderness Somebody say amen yeah. Let me say what God's will is for them Is for them to be in the promised land You see Canaan land is not a type of heaven it's a type of a picture of the perfect will of God. And if you're in God's will, that place will seem like heaven. Somebody say amen. Yeah. In the Old Testament comment, there was always a place. And that place is Canaan's fair land. Right. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. It was a large land and a good land. And it was what God had prepared for his chosen people. It was the best place that they could be in God's perfect will. By way of application tonight, that God has a will for you and I. God's got a plan. Did you know that? Yeah. That God's got a purpose and a plan for you and I. Yeah. And whatever that may be in your life, it's the best thing that you can ever imagine. It's the wonderful will of God. Somebody say amen. The songwriters oftentimes compare it to heaven, and I'm not mad at them about it, because when you get in the will of God, it'll seem like heaven to you. There'll be peace which passes understanding. Yeah. And although there's wars and problems and things that will arise in Canaan land, there's a there's a joy unspeakable yeah. and full of glory yeah. in that place that God has planned for you to be. Everybody ought to be in God's perfect will. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Y'all with me tonight? Yeah. Amen. And it seems here, listen, the children of Israel are about to go in and possess <laughs> They're about to enter in and enjoy the things that God has prepared for them. You know this crowd in the wilderness? They watched the old crowd of unbelief die in the desert. Somebody say amen. Everybody that came out of Egypt with the exception of two men, one by the name of Caleb and the other by the name of Joshua, had died and were buried in the wilderness. Somebody say amen. And all this crowd's ever done is hear about Canaan land. How wonderful it is. How wonderful God is in preparing them this land. And so the excitement, you can understand the anticipation that they are having as they're on the brink of something big in their life. And you ever felt like in your spiritual life that you're on the brink of something big? And you ever felt like that God is about to move you into another You're just about to get in on the things that God has prepared for you. Yes, sir. Let me ask you this. Are you sitting there tonight and you're wandering aimlessly around? You're saved by the grace of God. Let me say this to you. Some folks are still in Egypt. Amen. They have been born again. Yeah. Still enslaved to sin. Still, still a slave to Pharaoh. That's not God's will. Somebody help me there. They got out of Egypt by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Yeah. Did you know there was a lamb that shed his blood for you in order to get you out of your sin? Honey, hallelujah. It's not God's will. How many of you listen to this? About this? Some folks, Christians, preacher, are aimlessly wandering around the wilderness, never with any direction. 
said. Every time you come to water in your Bible, it speaks of changing worlds and going to the next level. Yes. Amen. Genesis chapter number one. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep until the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I just felt a preach kicking right there. When the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and divided the waters. Hey, you know what he did? He parted the waters. Glory to God. He parted the waters. And there's a brand new world that appeared. Yes. Amen. Genesis chapter number seven. You old Noah built that boat. God called him to be a preacher. He wasn't real good at that. And it was a side God built a boat. He pretty good at that. Say amen. Amen. And the flood came. And those waters and old Noah and those eight souls, they crossed that water. And the dry land appeared. God brought them across. And there's a brand new world that appeared unto them. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter number 15. When they got on the other side of the Red Sea. You see that night they left Egypt. They were outside of Egypt. They were, they were no longer enslaved. But as long as Pharaoh could get to them, they were still in Egypt. You're not out of Egypt until God brings you miraculously across. And there was no way around that Red Sea. And thank God God come from the other side. And with a blast of his nostrils. And the chariot that walked across from dry land. It was the single greatest event in the history of the Jews, and still to this day they talk about it. Yes. Right. Took them to another world. Right. No Moses yes. sang. Hallelujah. First recorded song in your Bible. There wasn't no singing going on down there in Egypt. But nothing to sing about. You know why a bird sings? Because it's free, I'm about to take it back. <laughs> Amen. Don't think I won't do it, honey. Amen. I'm on that high carb diet. I got a lot of energy, but it don't last very long. <laughs> so I got to count the cost. I ain't got time to take no lap. I mean, I do it when I get back. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> I got some more stuff on my heart to say. There are changing worlds. What God did for that last generation, He's about to do for this next generation. Praise God, they're about to change worlds. They're standing on the brink of something big in their life. And they can just see Daniel Lamb. He's just in sight. And they're excited and they want to get to it. But there's something that is preventing them from hearing into and enjoying the things of God. Help me, Jesus. Right, here's, you see, here's where the sermon begins. That's good, Brother Bud. Preach, brother. They're standing there, and the Bible said they camped out for three days and three nights. And they're trying to find a way over. Amen. I mean, some of them went upriver. Upriver, try to find a way to get over. Some of them went downriver, try to find a way over. Yeah. And after three days and three nights, does that sound familiar to anybody? Yeah. Y'all with me? 
Amen. That's I was the first person in my family to ever get saved far back as anybody could ever come. All my family, every male member of my family was an alcoholic or a drug addict. As far back as anybody can recall. You've heard it said of others, but it's true of me. I was literally raised on a bar stool. My mother was the bartender at the Golden Nugget in Gale in Graysville, Tennessee, just at the Hamilton County, Ray County line. And there was a little bar there called the Golden Nugget. And mom didn't have a babysitter, she put me on in the bar. That's where I grew up doing homework on in the bar. But that is something about a child that is raised up in that type of environment. Somebody that sees things that they all might be able to see at that early age. And hears things that I might be here. And listen, you'll grow up and you'll have issues. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Lost people that get out there, they come in and they come into the house of God and they've got issues. Yeah. And they bring them with them. Amen. Amen. A lot of the problems that they encounter is because of things that have happened in their past. Amen. And every time they start to enjoy the things of God, every time they start to like it, some issue comes up and it prevents them from entering in and enjoying the things of God. Right. Right. I haven't been in church long enough now, about 20 years, I've been pastoring 15. And I know, I know enough about church folks that church folks got issues too. Amen. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Amen. I'm having issues with you, not with me. Got issues. Church, preacher, church folks got issues. In fact, I'm going out with him and say this: the church folks got more issues than the lost people do. Amen. You know what I saw in that church, that bar stool? I see them drunks beating the devil out of one another. Ten minutes later, they're just buying each other rounds, hugging and laughing. Ain't never seen that in a Baptist church. <laughs> Not in a deacon's meeting, or a prayer meeting, or a men's meeting, or any other kind of meeting, for that matter. I love preachers' kids. And it's a wonder and a miracle of God that any preacher's kid that grows up on a church pew yes. stays in church and loves Jesus past 18 years old because they see the hypocrisy, they see the double standards, yes. they see the dark side of this yes. They want to stand the day more in the back. Honey, there are issues. Yes, sir. Yes. Issues that will keep you from enjoying your Christianity. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that God wants you to enjoy it. God's got something in mind for all of us. He wants us to have joy unspeakable yeah. and full of yeah. and a peace yeah. with passion yeah. for yeah. This Christianity is not to be endured, yeah. but it's to be enjoyed. Yeah. You can be a happy Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm championing the cause of you can be a Christian and life. Amen. Who was it said we had to be somber and upset and head down all the time? Amen. You can enjoy your Christianity. Yes, sir. Amen. I'll tell you why most folks don't because they got issues. Amen. Amen. Yes. And there are issues of life that keep you from enjoying the things of God. Amen. But I got more to say, I'm just let that soak in on you. Don't think just because I'm out of breath, I can't preach it. <laughs> I'm used to this. I've been doing this 20 years. Don't think I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> there are issues that'll keep folks from enjoying church. I've seen it preacher. As a pastor, I want to come in. And for the first several months, praise God, I'm talking about enjoying the things of God. Start to read the Bible. Start to attend church. Start tired. Help me, Jesus. Somebody say, hey, amen. Lord, yeah. God, is that a foreign doctrine these days? Start to tithe. Amen. Amen. And then all of a sudden, some issue comes up and it prevents them from going any further with God. There are issues. Yeah. Yep. Preach a little while on getting over the issues of life. That's good. Amen. I'm going to say this to you at the outset. Let me say, in order to get over the things, I'm going to do what my pastor told me. He said, don't ever tell somebody to do something and not tell them how to do it. So in essence, the message is this, how to get over the issues of life. Joshua did. The children of Israel did. We'll see in just a moment. We read the text. 
They got over it. Amen. They got beyond it. They entered into the things of God and enjoyed what God had planned for them. Let's say this to you just as God had something for those children of Israel. God has something in mind for you. That's the best thing you can ever imagine. Amen. Jesus said, I'm coming to them. I have life, but then I have more of it. Getting over the issues of life. Let me say this to you that in order for you to get over the things that you need to get over, by the way, you're already thinking about it, because I'm thinking about life. Say amen. Oh, don't you think I should just preach to you? I found out a long time ago if I'll just preach to me, everybody else will get some help too. <laughs> amen. In order to get over the things that we need to get over, we need some things we need to get under. You see, that's one of them opposites. And we're talking about the opposites this morning. The way up is down. Somebody right. say amen. Yeah. In God's economy. And this is one of those opposites in the Word of God. That if you want to get over the issues of life, there's some things you've got to get under. I get too quickly. There's four things. Four things. Take a deep breath. Four things. Four, not seven, bless your heart. Could have been twelve. I am near, I near that smart. Four. Count your blessings. Amen. Four things. We need to get it first of all in the to Look at verse number three. Chapter three, verse three. This is expository message, not suppository, mind you. I've heard, too, I've heard enough suppository sermons. God in heaven. Deliver us. Man, that kind of preacher. <laughs> That's his job. <laughs> That's his job. Amen. The difference between the pastor and the evangelist, the evangelist come in and dump a load and drive off. <laughs> pastor come in and dump a load and get out the rake. So I'll stay here on the rake. Amen. There's some things that we got to get under. Look at verse number three. In order to get over the issues of life, you've got to get under, first of all, you've got to get under the right authority. Amen? Here's what we say this to you. The children of Israel went three days and three nights trying to find a way over. And they came back and they said this to you. It was, not the, it was not the committee that decided how to get over. Can I get a witness right there? Now, if I get a witness right there, let's move on. It wasn't a mossy back deacon, somebody say amen. It wasn't a daddy rabbit. It wasn't Brady. Can I get a witness? That's not how they found out. They said there's one person, there's one person that knows how to get us over. There's one person that knows how to get us over. And it's Joshua. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not introduce our hero. The Old Testament name Joshua is the equivalent of the New Testament name Jesus. Do you know who knows how to get you over? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus knows how to get you over. It don't matter what kind of issue that you're dealing with. It don't matter who done what to you or who said what or what kind of hurt or what kind of pain of the devil keeps to bring up in your mind. There's one person that knows how to get you over that thing. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus yeah. has got to be in charge yeah. of your life. Jesus has got to be in charge of your life. Yeah. Amen. 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 Jesus. Yeah. Jesus has to be in charge of your home. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus has to be in charge at the church house. The reason why we're dealing with issues that we can never get over is because we're trying to run things on our own. We're going to have to let go of this illusion of control. Amen? Amen. In order to get over the issues of life, we've got to get under the right authority. Joshua knows how to get us over. Joshua knows how to get us across. Joshua knows how to do it. Somebody say amen. You see, I'm going to say something to you. And Jesus, Jesus will never force himself on anybody. You're right. I'm reminding you. Mark chapter number 6. Jesus had already begun his earthly public ministry of healing the sick and raising the dead and casting out the devils. He'd done many wonderful miracles and his, his, his fame had been renowned and everybody was already talking about him. And he came home to his hometown of Nazareth. And don't you know that Jesus, I believe mean, with all my heart that Jesus had big things in mind for his hometown. That's where he grew up. He knew everything that he wasn't know about them folks. There was folks that helped him. I'm sure he wanted to help them out. He wanted to believe with all my heart. He wanted to do great things. Because the Bible said he could there do no mighty works. Because of their unbelief. That tells me that he wanted to do some mighty works in Nazareth. And here's what he did. 
on the Sabbath day. That Sunday right here, that was Saturday, he walked up into the synagogue, that's the church house, walked up into the synagogue, and he sat down in the seat of Moses. Now there's a whole bunch of chairs up there, but in the Jewish synagogue, he's on one chair. And he walked up, he sat down, and he took the scroll, the book of Isaiah, and he opened up to Isaiah 61. Glory to God, I'm going to take a lap here. The Spirit of the Lord God upon me. Hallelujah. He said, children, back to one the prophet prophesied. I'm right here. It's me. It's me. I'm the one. I'm the stone cut out without hands. I'm David stands. I'm Solomon's wisdom. I'm the one. I'm the seed of will.
thing we got here, it better not get so on purpose. Amen. And that community table saying, Our good covenant. What's the deal? I'm going to skip a lot of preaching because I love y'all real good. Amen. And there's probably cake and ice cream on there. <laughs> really, what the big deal of that box is, is it's a, rep it's a representation of God Himself. But the big deal about that box was it was covered in the blood. Every year, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies with the blood of a of a, of a heifer and a blood of a lamb and would sprinkle seven times and it would roll away the sin of the people for a year. Ain't that good? Now let me get something right here. I don't know if, I don't know if I'll give it to you, but I'm going to it. Amen. I believe this is how good God is. Say amen right there. Amen. Every time that sin would roll back, can you imagine every year the high priest went in the sin and rolled ahead for another year? And then he'd go into the next year and roll ahead another year. Can you imagine after all the years the great snowball effect of all the iniquity of the children of Israel? And I'm going to say this to you. That wasn't just all their sin. It was everybody's sin. Yeah. Everybody's sin. Yeah. It wasn't just the children of Israel. It was everybody's sin. What well, snowball? I would say this to you when God looked down in time. That every time the Old Testament saint sins would roll forward, then the New Testament sins would roll back. Somebody say amen. And we roll ahead and we roll back until finally the Lamb of God John the Baptist said to hold the Lamb of God. It's taking the way to sin the world. And that very Lord snowball of sin was taken in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and he paid the price once for all for the sins of the world. Now our sins are not covered. They're not rolled ahead. say this to you. In order to get over the issues of life, you've got to get under the right atonement. Amen. Yeah. Get under the right atonement. The blood. Yeah. Oh, you got to get it under the blood. Those issues somebody's dealing right now. You're dealing with the issue of salvation. Well, guess what? He shed his blood to save your soul. Yeah. Maybe you've got sin issues. First John chapter 1 says we walk in light as he is in light and fellowship with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thank God the blood is good for all of our sin issues. Amen. Maybe there are satanic issues keeping you from enjoying the things of God. Roman Revelation chapter 12 talks about the devil said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Thank God there's, there's victory in the blood. Amen. Yes. Amen. Get under the right atonement. You see, we're trying to cover our own sins. Trying to cover our own situations. Those issues that are breaking our hearts from day to day, and we're ashamed of it. We won't tell nobody about it. But here's what the Lord said in Isaiah 18. Come now, let us reason again. That's what Though your sins be scarlet, they should be white as snow. Hallelujah. You know how it does that, don't you? With the blood. Amen. Get it under the blood. I said this to you. If you're an issue this morning, this tonight, that's got you bound up and got you got you where you can't even enjoy the things of God, you ought to come down to this old-fashioned altar and put it under the blood. Amen. Amen. Get under the right authority. Get under Good. the right atonement. I want you to notice with me. Verse number three. It said, Joshua commanded the people. When you see the ark of the covenant, the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place. <coughs> Did you get that part? Number three. In order to get over the issues of life, we've got to get under the right attitude. This is what he said. You need to be willing to leave where you're at. See, some of them, was, some of them got comfortable there. Some of them, in fact, in fact, two and a half tribes of the children of Israel. Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah. Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh told Moses, we'll not go into that land. We'll just, we're just we going to stay over here. We're going to sail for what's on this side of the Jordan. But the problem with that is that's the wrong attitude. Somebody say amen. You ought to be, we ought to be willing to follow God no matter where he says to go. And he says when you see the heart going, then you're supposed to remove from your place. Somebody say amen. And the problem with most of us is we're not willing to leave where we are. You're right. Reuben Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh said we're the folks that are good. We raise cattle. So the problem they was having is a lot of problem a lot of Christians are having nowadays. The two reasons why they can't come to church because they're too busy raising cattle. 
instead of raising kids. Somebody say amen. amen. They was more concerned about raising cattle than they were raising their children. So they decided they'd stay on this side of the Jordan. Well, guess what? God gave them what they want. Honey, God lets you have what you want. Right. Our father had no sense to know what was going on down there in that far country, but he went ahead and gave that boy his living anyhow. Yes. Amen. So the worst thing God can ever do for us is give us what we want. You're right. Right. Amen. We'll do it. They said, we'll do this. He said, you go right ahead. Well, they started out raising cattle. By the time Jesus got there, now by the way, that area on the other side of the Jordan River what was called in the, in the Old Testament the land, the base, the mountain range of Bashan. You remember Psalm 22? The Bible said the strong bulls of Bashan. I know that's talking about demons that came after Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, but there's a, there is a, a picture there, and it was said that in that day, if you wanted to see some wonderful land for raising cattle, that was it. Right there in that mountain range. It's called the Golden Heights today. They started out raising cattle. But by the time Jesus docked his boat, his boat in the country of the Gadarenes. Are y'all with me? You come, come with me now. Come with me. By the time Jesus docked his boat in the country of the Gadarenes. You remember that old maniac of Gadara? That was running around cutting himself in tunes. No man can bind him. Had at least 2,000 demons in him. Amen? By the time Jesus got there, they were not raising cattle. They were raising hogs. Now, I don't know how much you know about the Jewish dietary laws. They wouldn't have to have hogs. It was against the law. Amen. They was bootlegging hogs. Can I get a witness? Amen. Black market bacon. Underground ham and cheese sandwiches being run into Jerusalem. Hey, I'm with y'all. I'm a good Gentile. Say hey, man. That problem of the Lord had to be a Jew because only how you going to start death and hog then. Amen. That man come back and says, 25, I thought I had 26 cat hogs. I'd be like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. I'd be living high. I don't know. But they wouldn't allow me that. It was against the law. And furthermore, that area, that maniac of Gadara, there was at least 2,000 demons in that man. And that area was predominantly uh, alive with demonic activity. And what I said all that to say this, you either get in on God's best or you'll get the devil's worst. You either get in on what God says get in on or you'll suffer the consequences of everything the devil decides to throw at you. Amen. Have the wrong attitude. You ought to have the right attitude. I'm willing to do whatever you want. The preacher was to say, God's told me to sell this building and look down there on such and such a highway and buy a piece of land. Well, I would say, let's go do it. Amen. I don't know where that came from, but that was free for you. Right there. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I love churches with cemeteries. Y'all got one? Great, sir. Amen. They ain't willing to go because Granny's out there. Well, let's dig her up. Take her with us. I got a Bible on that. That's what we've done with Joseph. I'll take her with me. Amen. Yeah. Right attitude. I'm talking about getting in on the right attitude. Getting under the right attitude. That's right. Now, here's the last one right here. Look at your Bible. Chapter 3, verse 3. Joshua commanded the people. He said, command the people when you see the ark of the covenant, the Lord your God, and the priests of the Levites bear you shall remove from your place. Now look at this last phrase. Go after it. Go after it. Go after what? Go after that ark. I didn't told you all ago that that Ark of the Covenant was a physical, visible representation of God Himself. And the Ark of the Covenant was always in the midst of people. When the Ark, when the Ark was in the midst, God was in the midst. But now the Ark was going to a place they'd never been, in a direction they'd never been, to a place they'd never been, to an unfamiliar path. But here in the still, the Bible said they're supposed to remove from their place and go after it. Follow God. Let me say this to you. In order to get over the issues of life, we've got to get over the right affection. I'm going to say something to you. You will pursue that for which you care the most for. You're right. Amen. Yeah. Go after the things we want the most. Yeah. We go after the things we want the most. Right. And that's exactly how it is with God. If we want Him bad enough, we'll follow Him. We'll go after Him 
And that's how, that's the secret to the Christian life is just go after God. Amen. Just go after God. I love the Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon starts out and the songwriters, he's chasing the he's chasing the Shunammite girl. And then she falls in love with him. And then things change. And it's no longer him pursuing her, but rather she's pursuing him. That's the Christian life. Jesus came to me in my sin. In the back seat of an old railroad across the Tennessee on the mountain. And saved my soul. He came to me, Calvary. And I will tell you something, ever since then I've been wanting him. Going after him. Look, I'm not done it all right. I'm not done it all right. I'm not done enough. Late in bed at times when he's, when he's been there to hold the door and I didn't get up and I went to find him and it was gone. It's touched my heart sometimes to get up and pray. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't answer his call. Then finally, out of shame, I'd go and get in the closet to find that he was already gone. Amen. 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 While all of our other passions are reigning in our lives. I'm not fussing at you. I'm not beating nobody up. And I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. The reason why we're having so many issues that are keeping us from enjoying church is because the only time we do church is on Sunday. Church is not something we do. It's something we are. You don't leave it here when you go. You go. He goes with you when you go. Somebody say, man, you're either a good Christian or you're a bad Christian. You either got a good testimony or a bad testimony. You're either a good witness or a bad witness. Say one time you get as much of God as you want. And then follow the statement up by saying you have as much of God as you want. Oh my. Oh my. The reason why we're dealing with all these issues and we can't get over it is because God's not number one in our life. God's not number one in our life. I say, oh, get over the issues of life, that you know the right affection. Now we do this. Here we are. The priests, the Levites, are standing there. They've got the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulder. Now, if it's me, I'm going to be in the back. Now, let me remind you, we're talking about a raging, rapid river. Somebody say amen. A rapid, raging river, death by drowning. If I had to choose the way I leave out of here, it would not be by drowning. Somebody say amen. 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 A rapid, and the Bible said that the Jordan had overflowed all his banks that time of the year. That time of the year it was overflowed. It was a swollen Jordan River. Here they are. And all they have is a word from Joshua. Joshua says, go. Amen. I'd rather have been the guy in the back. But with my luck, I'll be in the front. Standing there. Amen. Y'all bored. Y'all are done, aren't you? <laughs> me and this guy standing here looking at each other. He's waiting on me. I'm waiting on him. I do want one of them to sit here. <laughs> Go. I mean, if I'm dying, I want him to die first. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm scared of drowning at this point. I'm talking about a swollen, raging river. He just says, go on down in there. Go on down in there. That's in the riches. You got to look at it too. Go on down in there. <laughs> and finally, he just says, all right. Guess what happened? Now, we borrow the imagination of that. Mine's overactive. I'm heavy. He steps down into that river. And that thing that they was afraid of is now running from them. Every time their foot touches down, the water flees. Every time their foot touches down, the water flees. And by this time, they're trying to, trying to get the water. And the water's running from them. And the, and the water is scared of them. They were afraid of them. Yeah. Didn't even get their sandals made. 
Because the Bible said when they had clean gone over. Read your Bible, amen. You believe your King James Bible? When they had clean gone over. Ain't no mud on their sandals. And what I'm telling you is once you've gotten under the things that you need to get under, them issues are really no longer an issue. It's not even an issue anymore. Once you've got yourself under the right authority and the right atonement and the right attitude and the right affection, once you've submitted yourself to the things that God has placed in your life to help you and not to hurt you, those issues are no longer an issue. You can get over them. You can go into Canaan's fair land. You can enjoy your Christianity rather than endure it. Wouldn't church be more fun? Wouldn't church be more fun if, you, if more of us enjoyed it rather than endure it? Yeah. Amen. Wouldn't yeah. life be more worth living if you didn't have to drag that thing around? Yeah. You know what thing I'm talking about? Yeah. We live in a day where you're hard pressed to find somebody that ain't somebody been hurt by. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Somebody's done something. And I'm not talking about something that just hurts your feelings. These things that goes on these days that will hurt somebody down to the quick. That will stay with them the rest of their life. I have encountered people out there in the world that used to be in church, that used to be in the house of God faithful, and will never come back. Right. Because of something that went on. Yes. Something somebody said, something somebody done, something thing. Mm -hmm. Harm. Some harm done by some devil. You can't get over it. Yeah. Let me tell you something, honey. You can't get over it. You find your way down this old-fashioned altar and get under the things you need to get under and God will get you over those issues. That's right. Let's all stand. I'm done preaching. Bow with me, if you will, the word of prayer. What you do is do what you do. Father, thank you for the word of God tonight. Thank you for your help. And I pray, oh God, if there's somebody in this place has never been saved. They've got the biggest issue of them all. The issue that they're dealing with, the Lord will take them to hell. Oh my. Maybe somebody's deceived by religion. Oh, what an issue. There's somebody in here, Lord, that's saved by the grace of God. When somebody's done something to them, it's stunned their growth, it's hurt them, it's injured them. They cannot enjoy the things of God. Every time they start to lack it, they were, they were reminded of that old thing. It's hurting, Lord. I pray that God you give them deliverance tonight. Lord, your word said we're more than conquerors. Now, if that's true, and I know that it has to be, give them victory tonight. We'll thank you for it. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name.